Hello, this is BSJ, and this is going to be a general guide about picking as well as something you should do at the start of every single game. This is kind of like a thought process that everyone should go through at the beginning of every game, and pretty much, if you're not doing it, it's pretty much laziness. Like, there's no reason not to. And these are really important things. I've made a couple videos on YouTube, talk about it on my stream a lot, but these are the things that if you go into every single game with these mindsets, I think it'll heavily influence your ability to pick the correct heroes, to build the right items, and play the game in the closest to correct possible way. When it comes to picking your hero, so we're just going to assume that, like in competitive, that you want to pick your hero late. You know, there's nothing you can really do if you pick your hero first. If you pick your hero first, we're kind of jumping past this step. We're going to talk about items and everything like that. But when you're picking your hero, you want to look at your heroes and the enemy heroes. And you have to ask yourself, what do they do well? What do they lack? What do my teammates do well? What do they lack? And these are the questions, what I mean by that is think about in terms of split push. It's like, you know, two contrasting examples. If I'm a uh, safe laner and I have to pick and my mid laner is an invoker and my off lane is a beastmaster, then I know that my team has a lot of tower push and a lot of split push. So maybe I want to be a more strong laner that, you know, relies on map control that helps map control out and maybe looks for kills. Um, I don't need to be a tower pusher. I don't need to be someone who split pushes lanes very much because I have two cores that already do that. Um, I could be a hero more like Ursa that wants to look for kills in frontline rather than being a hero like Slark or a hero like Terrorblade that split pushes because I already have two heroes that do that. Contrasting, if you have like a mid hero such as Death Prophet and off laner like Tide, that means you have team fight for days and that's great. But at the same time, if you build another hero that team fights and then the other team is competent, they'll just pick split pushers and heroes that de-push you. And what they'll do is they'll de-push your team fight and then they'll split push you and get more farm than you. So having too much team fight or too much split push can go wrong either way. So it's like if you were to pick Urso with like a Tidehunter Death Prophet and you weren't able to force objectives because they have split pushers, you'd have a tough time. But that'd be a game where you'd more want to build a split pusher that could also fight with their team at some point in the game. So that's one of those things where that's like the big thing is you want to think about what your team does well and what they don't do well. That's really the first step. That's like the easier thing to do. And I think it's a great place to start. And the next step is really asking yourself like about the enemy team. And the reason why I say the enemy team is it's like if your team is very committed to pushing, but at the same time, the enemy team has like a Tinker Elder Titan and you know you're not going to be able to end the game by 30 minutes in because their team fight or their D push is just so strong, then picking a hero that fully commits to a push strat is probably the wrong idea. So like say I pick a Drow safe lane I and mean, I've already picked in my mid now we're playing from the mid roll. It's like if I want to pick a mid laner that synergizes well with Drow and I know if I look at the enemy team, they lack D push. Maybe something like a DK or like another hero that wants to push early is the better pick. But if they have a lot of stalling heroes, like I said, with the Tinker Elder Titan, then picking a hero that can really rely on map control, something like a Storm Spear, something that can split push, um, all heroes don't do everything, you know. Heroes that de-push and heroes that team fight don't generally always split push or always get good kills, like they look for pickoffs. Every hero has their limitations, so you want to think about what your team lacks, what they do well, and then you want to think about what the opposite team, same thing. And the really big thing is here is it's like, on top of that, it's uh, another component of this is the laning stage. So it's like if I have an Invoker Beastmaster, I talked about how those are two heroes that heavily rely on a good start. So it's like similar to when I'm in a pub and my mid laner picks Alchemist, or I pick Alchemist as the mid laner, and then the safe laner picks a hero like Huskar. I know those two heroes may seem like, yeah, they synergize, Huskar runs around killing people while Alchemist farms, but if you really think about it, Huskar and Alchemist are incredibly weak at level one, like incredibly weak. So in a good like pro game, they would just get pressured. They would get like relentlessly ran at for like the first five, 10 minutes of the game. Two lanes would have a bad start. The two heroes that needed a good start now have a bad start and you're in a tough spot. So thinking about how important a good start is and what it takes to get a good start. Like on a hero like Ursa, for instance, much harder to pressure because he's such a strong laner. So picking him, but if you pick him in a lane where he's going to get two tri-lane supports and the other two lanes do their own thing, it's a waste of Ursa. Like that's like Ursa's a strong laner. He doesn't get contested very well. So if you're using two supports to babysit him, that's not correct either. If you're having two supports babysit you, you want to pick a greedier hero that relies on that support more because if you know the weaker a, a hero is early, stronger they are later. That's like the balance of Dota. So it all boils down to like what your team lacks, what they need. Do they need late game? Do they need push? Do they need, you know, pickoff potential? 
Do they need initiation? These are all the things where, you know, and that's why it's so important to understand Dota at such a high level and why I say that, you know, this video or this part of the video is really not for people below 4K because these concepts, are you're still learning them and that's okay. But the fact is, like, that's what it comes down with picking. And that's the best way to approach it is thinking about what your team needs and how much support you're getting, who you're laning against. All these kind of concepts that go into your pick are things that you should think about at the very beginning of the game. Because if you think about that with your pick, it'll also translate into how you play the game and then how you, uh, you know, item builds and play style and everything. So the next thing we're going to talk about once you started the lane is your laning matchup. So this boils down to your starting items, the way you're going to play the lane. The most important thing is to think of power spikes. So like my hero, if I'm against the Timber Saw, I know that when he hits level 3 and level 6, he becomes much stronger. Level 3, his reactive armor becomes double the power, and he becomes much harder to harass out of lane. And at level 6, he gains kill potential on me. And it's like if I'm against, you know, a hero like Void, I know that early on his time walk is low level, so I can, you know, abuse that fact. But the minute he gets chrono, I'm at possible danger of a support rotating. All these heroes have power spikes comparatively to your own. It's the same like with a Slark, you get much stronger at level 6. With a Morphling, you get much stronger with just levels or just items. Um, every hero is very different, but thinking about that the way the lane plays out is also very important. Thinking about the power spikes also has to do with thinking about the strengths of your hero in the lane. Meaning like I have higher base damage, I have higher move speed, I have higher armor. I have better ability to push the wave and then pull at 53. Whatever the difference is between your two lanes, I have higher kill potential, which means that you can play aggressively, and if you don't play aggressively, then you're probably going to lose. Generally speaking, it's all a balance of things. Heroes with high kill potential are generally weaker laners, meaning like they, whatever their kill potential is makes them a naturally weaker laner because that's what they do is they have kill potential. A hero like Pudge, I know he's not a carry, but it's a perfect example of a hero with high kill potential but a very weak laner. It's just stuff like that where think about what your advantage is on the other person. So it's like if I have superior base damage and I'm a melee hero against a ranged hero, I'm not going to try to harass them. I'm just going to try to out deny them because I have higher base damage but they can harass me from farther away so i'm just going to make sure i get all the denies but if i'm against an offlaner who went quelling blade first and they have 65 base damage and i have 60 but i have a poor man shield i'm going to hit them a lot because i know i'm not going to be able to out deny them they hit for 65 plus a quelling blade and i only hit for 60 but they don't have a stout shield or they only have a stout shield in very little region and it's something where it's all about how you're going to play the lane so it also goes into like you know, thinking about your landing stage in terms of unavoidable damage and avoidable damage. So, and that has to do with a lot with, you know, how much regen you're going to build and the items you build. So, for instance, you know, the best example I give and something that's shown up in my coaching sessions is Slark against Axe and Lane. If you ever initiate onto the Axe with a Pounce, you're going to take several spends of damage. That's what I would consider unavoidable damage. This is like a perfect example. Unavoidable damage. If you're against a ranged hero, that is against you as a melee hero and like you're trying to last it you're gonna get right clicked by a ranged hero it's just going to happen um and that's unavoidable damage and that's the damage you have to account for with your region and then the next step is asking yourself if i were to be aggressive if i were to try to kill them if i were to try to push the lane out all these things how much damage more can i afford to take how much like take a gauge guess and that's how you build your starting items. It's like, if I think against an axe, I'm going to take a shit ton of damage. Then you should go for more regen. But you should ask yourself, if I go for this much regen, can I still afford to be aggressive and tank more damage than what's already unavoidable? And if the answer is yes, then you play more aggressively. If the answer is no, then you probably have to play passively if you can't build enough regen to sustain through the lane. And there's lanes like that. But that's really important that you think about it that way, rather than just trying to guess what starting items you should build. Always guess what your laning a matchup is, think about your advantages, think about your disadvantages, think about the unavoidable damage and how much avoidable damage, quote unquote, that you can take in any given lane based on the region you have, based on the situation of the lane, meaning like say you had a free lane and then the guy comes to lane but you still have all this region, then you know like, hey, I have this extra region that I wasn't going to use so I can be more aggressive and take more what would be avoidable damage. It's all about the way, you know, thinking about this. Think about what's going to happen automatically, like just hero matchups, you know, like certain heroes do things. Like if you're against a Darkseer, you're going to take Ion Shell damage as a melee hero. So account for that with your starting items. Don't go low regen items. If you go low regen, you're going to just run out of regen over time because you're against a Darkseer. Very important things to think about. If you're against a Batrider, you know, buying, planning for an early stick as soon as possible because you're going to get sticky napalm a bunch. That's going to happen. There's nothing you can do about that. And that's how you should really approach to your starting items and game and that's something you should think about every game so the next thing we're really going to talk about and the last thing really is what it comes down to your item builds and your play style 
And these are things you should think about at the start of the game, because these are how you plan things out. This is what should happen at the start. And that's like a very important thing um, that I'm emphasizing is because a lot of people, you know, they don't know what items they're going to go. You should have a general idea every game that once it started, this is how, it, how I think the game's going to go. And this is what I think I'm going to build. And if something changes, say like someone on your team has a really good game or someone on your team has a really bad game and you have to carry them, whatever, then that's how you, or you have a free lane and you didn't expect one. And those are the ways that you can change the build that you had in mind, but you should always have this build planned out from the beginning. So when it comes down to these decisions, the biggest thing is like thinking about laning that I already talked about. Think about mid game, think about late game and think about counters. I've given a different approach to some of my coaching students about what I believe to be a counter. So what I mean to, as a counter is being able to build around them or not. What I mean by that is there's nothing a Batrider can do to stop an Oracle from ulting the Lasso target. There's literally nothing a Batrider can do. There's nothing that a Slark can do to get out of a Chrono. If Void Chronos you, you're chrono. That's just how it is. And that's why in like a hero like Slark compared to others is very squishy and relies on his mobility. So being able to get stunned up by a hero like Void reliably is what I would consider Slark's counter. And that goes for, you know, Batrider getting countered by Oracle. There's nothing you can build around. So heroes that counter you, for instance, like soft counters are heroes that are good against you, but you can itemize or play against them is like what I would consider to be a soft counter. So a perfect example of that, something like a Legion Commander against a Slark. Really good hero against Slark. But if you build Lincolns or can get away with it, then like it's fine for Slark matchup. Like that's a fine matchup for Slark as long as he can build a Lincolns. So it's one of those things where if I'm in a game where I think I'm gonna have to fight really early and I'm never gonna be able to afford a Lincolns, then going picking Slark into a Legion Commander is probably not advised. But if I have a team that bit creates a lot of space for me and my job's to split push and I know that I could probably go early Lincoln Sphere on Slark, then picking Slark against Legion would be much more suitable for that given game. These are just small examples, but ways you should think about the game. And it's like, if I'm a Slark and I'm against a Void, I'd be probably willing to pick Slark into Void if I have Avenge on my team or another hero to save me, like a Shadow Demon. But if I have nothing to save me from it and I know I'm going to get Chrono to every fight and most likely die, that's probably a game I don't want to pick Slark. So it's really one of those things. I use Slark as my primary example. It's one of my favorite heroes. It's one of the most you know picked heroes in, my, in pub games in general. Everyone loves playing him. But it's really something you should think about with every single hero. It's like if I want to pick a hero that split pushes and they have axe, you know, plus you know another hero that looks to pick you off when you're hitting the creep wave, then picking a hero like Timbersaw, something that doesn't have to be at the creep wave hitting it, may be the more likely choice. If you're a Morphling or you're looking to pick Morphling and you see that they have three silences, maybe going for a hero that you know, is naturally good against silences compared to a hero like Morphling that is hard countered by silences. And these are those things that you should be thinking about every game. And you should think about, you know, when you're picking as well as once you're starting your game, you know, what counter, like, what do I need to do my job? So that's like the next step. What do I need to do my job? Is my job split pushing? Is it team fighting? Is it pushing with my team? Is it taking objectives? Is it just farming? What is it? And it's like, so say your job as a Slark is to fight the enemy team and you're against a Legion. Maybe you shouldn't go Lincolns because Lincolns doesn't really help you fight. It helps you so you're not killable by Legion alone. But if Legion has help, then the Lincoln Sphere is not nearly as useful. Same idea with a hero like Ember Spirit. It's like if my job is to split push, I'm going to buy Boots of Travel. But if my job is to fight with my team a lot while someone else split pushes like a Beastmaster or like an Invoker or something, then maybe Phase Boots into Drums into Aquila would be a much better build in that specific game. So it's one of those things where like if you do too much split pushing or too much farming or too much team fight, it's just not enough. Like, like if, if you have all team fight items and no pickoff potential, then this enemy split pushers are going to free farm with like not worrying about dying at all. So like the next step when it comes down to this whole concept is what threatens you? Who threatens you? What items do you need to threaten them? What items do they need to threaten you, etc.? Like the perfect example of this is Storm versus Anti-Mage. Orchid versus Manta. This is like the epitome, you know, the archetypal example of this kind of thing. It's like if I'm an Anti-Mage against a Storm and I want to split push, and I know that if he goes Orchid and he gets it before I get my Manta, then I'm in trouble. But if I get my Manta before he gets his Orchid, my farm's just going to get out of control. I have solo kill potential on him now, and he can't kill me. And it's like that's a lot about your farming speed, a lot about your ability to do your job. It's like the same idea with team fighting. If you are against a Tidehunter and you have to be able to fight the enemy team because they're going to push your base, then going for a BKB earlier on heroes such as like Slark that don't necessarily want to build an early BKB is just necessary because if you have to fight them and BKB is what you need to fight them with and that's when you have to build BKB and that's when these items start to vary and these pro players and these pro matches and these are the things you should really be looking for on like in your item builds and your play style and it's like if my job is to split push 
what do I need to split push? Do I need a Manta for silences? Do I need a Lincoln Sphere for single target disables? Do I need Boots of Travel or a Blink Dagger? What do I need to do my job? And who on their team stops me from doing it? So for instance, if their only pickoff is Beastmaster, and I see Beastmaster bottom lane, then I should not be afraid to push top with, you know, utter will, like just free will. I should not be scared at all of pushing top. And it's one of those things where if you're monitoring who your threat is at the start of the game and thinking once Legion gets blink, once Beastmaster gets Necro, once Batrider gets blink, once like whatever these heroes get, Axe gets blink, then they're going to be trouble. So then if you think about that at the start of the game, then you're going to st start thinking around like the 12, 13 minute mark, like, oh, this hero could have a blink. I haven't seen them in a while. I'm going to play a bit differently, so I'm not going to die to blink. These are the kind of things where if you premeditate these decisions, your decision in item builds, so say like you're concerned that a bat rider is going to get a blink by 13 minutes or so and be able to threaten your team, then you're going to want to have a hero that can fight or split push by the 13 minute mark even if the bat rider has a blink and that's like one of those things where it's all about like if you build items that make you come online later than that bat rider with a blink then you're going to die a bunch to bat rider you're going to feed and your item build is just going to be useless so it's really thinking about when do they come online when do my heroes come online when do i have to be fight worthy like fight ready like do i have to be able to fight with my team right away or can my team really hold their own 4v5 while i split push i mean that's the kind of decision making that should happen at the start of every game that's really what it boils down to uh, these are things that should all happen at the beginning of the game and i know i made a long video out of this but this is something that i really think is important and cannot be underestimated for every game you play Hello! One, two, four, three K MMR Scrub Lords and Crybabies! This one's for you! So you think your team's the problem? Think again! You need to play more mythic to the script! Okay, okay, you suck! And if you don't wanna suck, even when your team sucks, cause you know they do, give Game Leap a shot! You'll learn the strats and secrets of 7 and 8k players. Like who? Well, Attacker, Yapsor, and Meepo. Hey, quit that! You will find over 600 pro guides on Game Leap that will teach you all you need to know about mechanics, different heroes, and decision making. Oh, and how not to feed your specialty. And hey, we guarantee that you're gonna see results. If you don't like it, ask for a full refund. It's just $5, zero risk. It's time to win, boys. Click on that button right here to get started.